This is how you build a prefab in a factory. This type is made out of steel sheets and foam plastic filling. There are no bulldozers, no cement mixers, no mud. It doesn't matter if it's raining outside. In the factory, the job goes on. If you want to make a window, you nibble away at it with your Draco shears. You don't build it up, you knock it out. You hang the walls on a steel frame and there's your house. It's mass production. This hut is for an industrial site, but the company has developed the system to turn out homes like this one. It's their demonstration model, a complete two-bedroom house which can be delivered on site while you wait. It costs seven and a half thousand pounds. That's about the same price you'd pay for a brick house of a similar size. In contrast to the post-war prefabs, this one is meant to last a long time. Inside, they're dry and well insulated. They're not second-class homes. And yet there aren't many of them. Some councils have small test schemes, but few are prepared to commit themselves to such a newfangled idea as the prefab. But here on the Medway, at least, they're making a start. The local council plans to put 63 factory-built homes on this clearance site, and it's already asked the government for permission to buy this new type of housing. With 3,000 families on the housing waiting list, Medway is prepared to try anything within reason. Medway's chief planner and architect is William Cook. He's impressed by the prefab's possibilities. They can be erected anywhere. For instance, on a derelict site like this one, in the middle of an existing council housing estate. You could literally uh, just put two houses down here uh, on a, in a day, and then within a week they could be uh, in use, because, you see, you've already got the roads in, the services are already there, it's just a question of connecting them up to the houses, and that's it. We've carried out an exercise on alternate survey sheets on corner sites where the houses traditionally were sort of on the corner and the, and the site divided up but with a 45 degree fence. Um, and on such sites as those, we, we found that we could put one or two of these units on and uh, we, we could get probably as many of, in the total uh, area of Medway of about a thousand units. And I think under normal conditions, probably one wouldn't do this, but uh, today it's so essential to uh, make the greatest use of all the facilities we've got available to overcome the housing problem. And I see this as one way of doing it. The trouble with prefabs is that they've got a bad reputation. They're part of the legend of post-war austerity. They're associated with shortages and rationing. But there are still prefab estates like this one in South London. And the people who live in these houses have strong feelings about them. These may be an Englishman's home, but they're no castles. They're prefabricated homes built just after the war. It was this sort of temporary housing that made prefab into a dirty word. Now, here's the twist. When in 1973, the GLC finally got round to redeveloping this estate, the people wouldn't hear of it. They actually liked living here. Charlie and Elizabeth Jeffrey have lived on the North Downham estate ever since they were bombed out of their London flat. Before he moved into one, Charlie used to build prefabs. While he helped to put up the walls, German prisoners were laying the foundations. These prefabs were made of asbestos and wood, and they were only meant to last 10 years. It seems there are few things as permanent as a temporary building. Charlie produced us. We had to go up for four flights of stairs before I got, got to my flat. No, you was all for the house, and I went somewhere. Yeah, but it? I didn't like it. Well, when she came didn't back like and told it. me she viewed a prefab, I said, well, take it. I said, what's called mm. salt? She told me what's salt. I said, well, it's what I've been working on. I said, you take the prefab. And, we... and we've been here ever since. Ever since. And you like it? Oh, I do. I certainly do. Their friend and neighbour, Grace Hofford, is a prefab convert. She came here from a traditional brick house. I lived at 547 Downham Way, and after I lost my husband, I, took, I lived there seven years after, uh, all on my own, and they kept breaking into me. I had five breakouts in there. So what was, was this? Was this a, a traditional house? Yes, a big five-room house. house, very mm. nice house, and down and way. 
and this person across the road wanted a five-room house, so therefore she asked me if I'd <coughs> have a look at the prefab, and I said yes, I liked it. So we went down to see about it. So you swapped uh, a large house yes. for a small for prefab. A small, yes, yes, being on my own. <laughs> Mm. And you've been quite happy with the Lovely. bargain you got. Lovely, yes, smashing. And I've been here uh, just over three years. It'll be four years at the end of this, this August coming. I was uh, 80 last August. There are, there are 80, she is. 80. Uh, yes. It's a yeah. lovely old lady. <laughs> old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are even dream prefabs. Anne Beadle spent all of her money on turning a prefab into her ideal home. Even if I won the pool, Sam would buy a prefab again. You'd buy another prefab? Yeah. A bigger prefab? No, just the same. But the general view of prefabs is that, uh, you know, there are inferior homes. Ah, no, 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 pe pe no, no, not no, inferior, no. It's, no, it, it, it's, it's a lot of old It's brought back, back, it's it's brought back, back from, from, from the beginning of the prefabricated bungalow era, when it first started. All right, well, look, you came in my place. Now, was you cold when you came in there? Was it comfortable? It was very comfortable. Well, well that's you it, are, you there see. You are, there's your answer. And you're all on and the level. And you come out on spec. There's yeah. your answer. Middle-class people, what they call the middle-class people, say prefabricate. Oh, no, pre... No, what are, you know, slums. But they've never lived in them. They've never lived in them. The politicians have never been round our places to, to see how we live in them. You see? If they... Who is it? Crossman, isn't it? Crossman is... A, Crossland. Crossland. If we was to come down here, we, Charlie and I, we could take him round, we could take him in our places. It'd leave his pants out and come and live in one of these. 